Hello there, I'm Dr. Steve Edelman. And I'm Dr. Jeremy Pettis. As many of you know, managing your diabetes includes making sure you're also taking care of your heart and your kidneys. It is important to know there is a strong relationship between type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease, which includes heart attacks and strokes. In addition, CKD or chronic kidney disease is also common and something we as providers and patients need to focus on. The good news is that these common conditions, which can be serious, are preventable. Taking the steps to reduce the risk of heart and kidney disease while managing glucose levels is extremely important. And the list of steps to stay healthy can seem longer than a grocery list or you know, a bar tab if you're Steve. Ultimately, it's up to both the person living with diabetes and their healthcare providers to stay educated and to be proactive in your treatment plan. And it's equally important to keep the lines of communication open to make sure you're on the same page and are both doing everything you can for a positive outcome. But that isn't always so easy. Coming up are a couple of examples of what not to do when it comes to taking control of your health and communicating with your healthcare team, both as a patient and a provider. So enjoy. Hello. Hey, sorry I'm late. The country club messed up my tea time again. That pushed my lunch reservation back. I missed my massage, yada, yada, yada. You know how it goes. Anyway, you're here today. What, what are we gonna talk about, James? Uh, well, actually, it's, it's Jeremy. And um, it's, been, uh, it's been 93 days since my last appointment. I've been doing a really good job taking all my medications. So I'm kind of exercising a little bit, eating well. So I'm actually really excited to see uh, what my A1C is doing. But I really wanted to talk to you about heart disease. Hey, because I'm just looking at your labs here. Your A1C is still extremely high, 7.2%. You know you have to get your A1C less than 7%, and if you don't, you're gonna go blind, you're gonna lose your toes, you may even develop erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction? Yeah, 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 don't worry. I have some really good sample medication that works extremely well. Oh. No, 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 no. Not these, these are mine. Oh. Well, you know, my A1C was, 8.5 just three months ago. So isn't 7.2 a pretty good improvement? Yeah, you should be doing better. Well, okay. Well, you know, I wanted to talk about some uh, medications. I've heard I can have complications with my heart and, and possibly my kidneys. So I want to make sure the medications I'm on kind of accounts for that. Which ones did I put you on again? Oh, well, you got Actually, me it doesn't matter. You said you were taking them regularly, right? Oh, yeah, every day. You'll probably be fine. Listen, let's move on. You said you had a question about something? Um, yeah, well, you know, I, I know that having type 2 diabetes can put me at higher risk of like of heart attacks and strokes. Plus, both my parents have heart issues. So I wanted to talk to you about what I can do to minimize that risk. <laughs> hey, give me a break. Does this say cardiologist? Let's stick with diabetes. You can speak to someone else about your heart. So um, I understand that uh, you haven't been exercising regularly, have you been? Well. Actually, like I was saying, I've been working on my diet a lot and I've been exercising kind of regularly. I started, you know, walking every day and counting my steps and I've been doing some light weight lifting and I've been working in my garden like pretty much every Didn't night. Didn't you say you were taking your medications regularly? Yes. Then you'll be fine. Whatever I prescribe for you, I'm sure I did it for a reason. So the last thing I wanted to ask you is if you could maybe refer me to any other kind of diabetes education because I think I could benefit. Time's from up. Okay. Listen, you're doing a good job. Just get your A1C down. Let me know what that cardiologist says. Or not, whatever. Good seeing you today. We'll see you next time, James. My name's Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. Really good to see you. Oh, hold on a second. Michael. Mikey! Hey, no, I'm not doing anything important, man. What's up? Shoot. No way. No way. No way, dude. That's classic, Stu. God, I wish I was there. <laughs> Jeremy, could we? Uh, yeah, well, listen, uh, Mike, uh, my, my doctor won't stop giving me the stink eye here, so I, I should probably wrap this up. What's that? Yeah, you're right. That's what he can do with my copay. <laughs> well, anyways, dude, Vegas this weekend is going to be killer off the chain. All right, bud, late. Um, anyways, uh, let's wrap this up. Jeremy, you know, it, it's been over a year since you've been in clinic. So I'm really glad you're here today. Yeah, well, I've been busy. I got ESPN Plus now, so, you know. You know, your, your A1C was 10.4%. And the both of us have to work together to get that down. And um, 
I noticed the last three prescriptions I wrote for you were not even picked up. And those medications are really gonna help you take control of your diabetes. Well, you know, Doc, I took those medicines you prescribed for me for a while, but they didn't make me feel any different at all, like not even a little bit. So clearly they weren't doing anything because, you know, logic. Well, Jeremy, that's, that's not really how those medications work. Well, let's talk about exercise. Exercise is so important. Do anything you like, whether it's walking, working in the garden, playing basketball, anything to get your body moving. It'll help not only your diabetes, but also your heart. Doc, first you're telling me to take meds because those are good for my diabetes. Now you're talking about exercise? I mean, meds, exercise, make up your mind, bro. Jeremy, you have to do both. Having type 2 diabetes puts you at greater risk for cardiovascular disease, like heart attacks and strokes. And the right combination of eating well, regular exercise, and taking your medications regularly will really help you live a long and healthy life with diabetes. Well, you know, I'm glad you said eating well, because I've heard that putting cinnamon on your food will just, you know, lower your blood sugar. And I, that's why I love those cinnamons. But is that true? Jeremy, that's definitely not true. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get you together with a good diabetes oh, care and education. Hold on a second. Mikey, what's up, man? No, no, no. I'm just finishing with this doctor now. Man, you should hear this guy. He's like, exercise, take your medications, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, I told him about the cinnamon thing. He was like, no, but I'm going to do it anyways. Anyways, man, Vegas, it's going to be so cool. Oh, my God, we're going to kill it. Kill it. All right, although these were somewhat exaggerated scenarios, except for how much I love my friend Mikey. Mikey. <laughs> who is awesome, by the way. Um, you know, the barriers that both patients and providers run into are more common than you might think. And it can sometimes seem like patients and providers are just talking past each other. So the best thing we can do is make sure we're opening communication lines so we're all on the same page and making sure we're educated on the best management strategies and we're committed to our and our patients' care. For those of you living with diabetes, check out all the awesome resources on the TCOID and No Diabetes by Heart websites related to type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. If you're a healthcare professional, we've got tons of resources for you too. Make sure to head over to the TCOID and No Diabetes by Heart pages tailored to medical professionals to learn how you can help your patients live a long and healthy life. Thanks for watching, everybody.